Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on importing and exporting with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Today we'll walk you through the key elements of Microsoft Dynamics CRM's import and export functionality, to learn the ins and outs, the advantages and disadvantages, and the how-tos of importing and exporting with Dynamics CRM. I am Brian Dunn, Director of Marketing here at Quanta CRM. With me today is Marian Florio, a Senior Consultant. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to attend. And I'll take just a minute to cover some things before we start our presentation. Today, everyone's going to be in listen-only mode, so if you have any questions, just type them in the question box and go to webinar control panel, and we will answer those at the end of the webinar. Also, this webinar will be recorded, so if you missed the details and need to view it again, or if you know someone you think might benefit from the information and they're not present, then you can just visit us on our events page at quantacrm.com slash events. Uh, the webinar should be up uh, by the end of the day or early tomorrow. Um, you'll find the recorded presentation there along with um, other past recorded uh, presentations. Um, today's webinar should run right around half an hour. Um, however, there is a lot of information we need to cover in this session. So if you are our, one of our on-track customers, then um, more detailed information uh, is available as a deep dive session. So you just ask your success coach uh, to sign up for a deep dive session and we can get that scheduled for you. Uh, we're also planning a more advanced presentation. Um, this dive, again, diving deeper into imports and exports in Microsoft Serum. Um, and that should be early next year when that happens. So without further delay, I will turn the presentation over to Miriam. Thanks, Brian. We are going to go right into Dynamics CRM and take a look at importing and exporting data. So I am currently logged into Dynamics and my security role is, oh, let me just log back in here. Okay. Now my security role is that of an administrator. I also have other security roles that are assigned to me. So I have the rights to import and export data. We'll be looking a little bit further into security settings that you can set for your users in the system to restrict or allow access to perform data exports and imports. So we're going to start off with the basics of exporting data from Dynamics CRM online. And you can do that any number of ways. We can pull up a view. For instance, I can go to my accounts in the sales area of the system and I can export to Excel. So provided I have the rights, which we'll look over in a minute, I can click the Export to Excel options. And under the dropdown, there are some new features here. If you haven't seen 2015 um, Update 1 online, I'd like to just review those quickly with you. So the first option in Export to Excel of taking data out of Dynamics CRM is open in Excel online. Pretty self-explanatory, I can click this button and then have this launch in Excel online. I can also choose the static worksheet option. So with this current page, I can actually take this um, directly to Excel and open it up there. And I have two additional options here, which are kind of neat. The Dynamics work, dynamic worksheet option, which allows me to take the CRM data dynamically into a worksheet, meaning let's say for instance at this current view I'm looking at my active accounts logged in as Molly Clark and this number right now is shows five accounts on this page however tomorrow or the next day that number could increase or decrease. With a dynamic worksheet that information on my worksheet would then refresh dynamically based on the data that's actually in dynamic CRM and there are some things that need to be configured or working with your Outlook in order for this data to refresh. But other than that, um, it is works pretty seamlessly in the dynamic worksheet option or if you like the dynamic pivot table option in Excel. So those are my options to push data out of Dynamics CRM in this particular view. And of course, I can always change the views that are currently in the system and then export from there. So depending on where the data is and how I get to it, there is always that option for me. When I go to cases, for example, I can look at all cases in the system, active cases, and use that export that I'll always see in that top bar on the page. But, you know, it's nice to have those advanced, or the uh, views there in the system. Let me go back to the sales, and we'll take a look at the opportunities. For example, 
So let's say I want to get um, this information outside of Dynamics CRM Online, but it doesn't include um, maybe particular columns that I want, or I want to filter further on this information in a different that's not available to me directly from this view. What do I do? So in order to get more specific information or maybe even um, a combination of certain criteria on the account as well as the opportunities outside of Dynamic CRM, I can always use the advanced find option. So we'll just look at that real quickly and create an export um, of opportunities tied with some account data using this feature. So I'm going to push my advanced find button and that's going to bring me to a new advanced find screen. So we're going to look for opportunities here. I'm going to create a new saved view. So I'll just choose new here and we'll select opportunities where I am the account owner or I am the sorry opportunity owner. So we'll say owner equals current user. I could be explicit and say it's Molly Clark, but I'm running for myself or perhaps I'd want to use this um, for other folks in the system through creating system views. You could do something similar. And then I also want to take a look for related account information. So I want to not only see opportunities where I'm the current owner of the opportunities, but I want to make sure I'm also the owner of those accounts. So I'm going to choose related down here and choose another entity. And then I can choose fields under account. So this actually ties in information. Whenever you're doing an advanced find and we have other lunch and learns that we've covered on this topic, um, just remember that the advanced find is using by default an and criteria. You can also group or or and at the top of the page. Um, in this example, we're doing an and, so it's already implied here. So. Uh, owner of the account is the current user as well as the owner of the opportunity itself. We can hit the results. And then, of course, we can then export this data. So once we find what we need, we can export it. We can also, in the advanced find, we can edit the columns. So we can add or remove certain columns from this particular view. I can select the columns just by clicking the check boxes. So really, it's just a way for you almost to create a report directly by using these views. Or advanced finds, I'm sorry. So I'm just going to choose a number of columns here, and you can add those columns in, and then save that and export that same um, advanced find how you'd like it. So we're, we're going to actually go back to the security settings. I'm going to leave this page and we're going to go over um, some of the import and export security features. So let's go under settings and then data management. I'm sorry, we're going to go under settings and security. And the security roles for data imports and exports are found under security roles. And you're going to choose the security role um, that you want to see. Now, a major recommendation here is if you want to change an existing security role in the system, um, you can always make a copy of that security role and then modify it there. This just gives you that original security role that came straight out of the box with Dynamic Serum Online still intact. You can always make a copy and make modifications to that copy. In fact, if you make a copy um, or clone a security role, I would name it with some kind of a prefix or identifier that includes your company name on it so you can easily tell which security roles you've added to the system and which ones came canned with Dynamic CRM Online. I'm just going to choose the salesperson one here to show you or demonstrate where you're going to be looking for the values that you might change or set on these security roles. Under core records, there are a few items here that you would want to take a look at. There's data import, data mapping, and there's also the source. Um, you want to make sure that you set those values either for the user, the business unit, or the whole organization of whether users can um, import data for themselves, for others across the system, 
Um, you just want to make sure that that looks okay. Now, importing data usually isn't as big of a security concern as exporting data, so we'll take a look at that um, as well. But of course, for data imports, you want to make sure that the users know what they're doing, um, import the data correctly, although there are always remedies you can take if or should there be a problem with the data import. So we can talk about those later also. Under business management, if you scroll down, we'll just go down here to privacy related privileges. There are some additional privileges in here, um, namely the export to Excel function. So this is a real important one. If you want to restrict access for certain security roles in your system or users from exporting data to Excel um, across the board, across the entities, then you want to remove this or use a none selected for this export to Excel feature to make sure the users can't take data, data outside of dynamic CRM online. So if that's a concern for you, and you're worried about them getting at that data, then you can always restrict this or even make it just for the user themselves. So only they, they can only export their own records, for example. Um, just to keep in mind with the export to Excel feature, um, the go offline and Outlook is something just to remember. So go offline and Outlook, if you remember from previous Lunch and Learns, downloads a certain amount of data to Outlook. So when users are offline, they have access to that data. So remember that when, um, you, if you decide to restrict access, export to Excel, it's highly recommended that you don't allow users to take data offline in Outlook, because if they are offline, they could export that data directly from Outlook to a spreadsheet. Um, and you wouldn't have any control over that while they're offline in the system. So I would make sure that I turned off both the export to Excel and that offline in Outlook, possibly even some more features if you want to really restrict um, information from leaving from the system. But those are the major ones there. So let's just close this security role up here. And we'll talk a little bit about importing data into Dynamic CRM. So we'll go back to settings, and then we're going to go down to system data management. And under the data management section, there are a lot of options here. As Brian um, explained earlier in the broadcast, um, we have a lot of advanced features that are included in Dynamic CRM. We can't cover all of them during the Lunch and Learn. However, if you're interested in a, in a deep dive, your success coach can take you through in more detail or more customized detail for what you're looking to achieve. So we're going to look at some of the options that are included in the data import section. So there are templates for data import. So let's just look at those quickly. Um, they're under the templates for data import. So Dynamics allows us to import data pretty much into all entities in the system. And so you want to download the templates that are used for those entities by coming to the templates section and selecting your entity for which you would want to import data. So we can take a look at an account, for example and click download. And this would bring us to the template that's in the system. And you can see here it includes the fields that you would populate and potential drop down values. So those would all be in there. You could then populate the spreadsheet and import that data into Dynamics. And like I said, you would choose any of these entities um, or templates for data import that you would need. In deep dives or other sessions, you can always create custom templates for data import if one of those templates doesn't fit your needs exactly or you need to do more specific data mapping for your imports. You can also set up duplicate detection roles. So this is an important feature. When we're importing data, it's oftentimes going to include duplicate accounts or what the system might see as duplicates, but for your organization, those records are not actually duplicates. They're actually separate customers. They might have the same names. They might not be affiliated at all and just be um, happen to have the same name across country. They could be the same organization in different locations. So you might have ABC customer in Houston as well as New York City, and you want them separated inside of Dynamics. So you want to make sure you set up those duplicate detection roles that fit your needs. So we're going to go inside of duplicate detection roles and just create a new role that tells us that accounts are not duplicates unless they're found in the same state with the same exact name. So I'm going to click new here and we'll call it accounts in same state. And you can call them whatever you want. The record type that we're creating this role for, the, or the base record type, is account. 
and the matching record type that the data will be imported into is also a count. And you can select these rules kind of like how we created the advanced find. So we're going to choose account name and then the criteria. So this is just saying how is it going to be matched with the data that exists in your system. And this account name, we can choose exact match. So we want the account name to be an exact match with an account name that's currently in our system. And also, can't just be the account name, we want to also include that the state or province is also has an exact match for it to see it as a, as a duplicate record. And we can tell it to ignore blank values so it doesn't see those values in there. So this is a double rule. We're saying that only duplicates with the exact same name and the exact same state are considered duplicates and to skip or merge those records. Otherwise, add the new record in from our spreadsheet. And so you can create these duplicate rules or duplicate detection rules for different entities. And that might be for contacts. You might say that the first name has the same first character. The last name is the same exact last name. And perhaps the email address or phone number is also a match in the system. So you might make several of those fields part of the value or the duplicate detection. So I'm going to save and close this. And then we're going to go back to data management. Of course, you want to publish your du duplicate detection rules to make them available. But they're in, a, in conjunction with the duplicate detection rules, there are duplicate detection settings. So we can tell the system when to detect duplicates. And you can see here that by default, when a record is created or updated, Dynamics will look and see if there are could be a potential duplicate in the system. Users can override that detection. So it might say that this is possibly a duplicate record. Users could then um, go ahead and create the record or say, yes, that was actually a duplicate. I'm, that's what I meant to be entering. And then when Dynamics Serum um, for Outlook goes offline to online, you want it to check to make sure that we're not having more duplication in the system. And then during the data import, you can always untoggle one of, or all of these options if you don't want to use duplicate detection settings. We'll leave them turned on. I'll click Cancel here. And now on to um, data imports. So we can look at the import section. So under imports, we can go directly into here and import data into CRM. Or we can even go underneath the different views. So I could go under sales and accounts, for example. And just like we had the option to import or export data earlier, we could always import data into Dynamics. So I can import data by clicking import data, or I can download the template for import at this point. So I could click on either one, either option from here and then import the data in. I'll just choose import data and go through this wizard pretty quickly. So we have different supported file types. You can see there's an XML spreadsheet, 2003, CSV files, text files, XLSX, and zip files. So different options there. And then, of course, you can choose your data for import. As a rule of thumb, even though we can always backtrack if, we, if something goes wrong, let's say during a data import, uh, we can bulk remove the records or perform other actions that reverse that import, I always recommend importing a subset first. And so I recommend taking, let's say, five records from this large spreadsheet that you might have and maybe include some duplicates in there or some rows that might look similar so you can see what the behavior is going to be when you import all of the records later. This just makes it easier and faster for your data import. It makes it faster to identify any problems with the data integrity of the records that did get imported. Um, or say that it's okay and import the rest of the data le later. You can include those same records again in your separate import, or you could exclude them from that second import once you know that the data has been properly set. And if you have duplicate detection rules in place, you won't have duplicates of those same records that you included from the subset. And so that's why here I have a small data subset for import that I'm going to be using. And I'll choose open on that and then click next. Okay, so then I have some options here. So even though my setting on the system was on for duplicate detection on data imports, I still have options here during the data import wizard that's asking me to allow duplicates, no or yes. 
And so it's going to be using those based on duplicate detection settings in Dynamics CRM. So I believe that is no duplicates. And select the owner for imported records. So we'll say Molly Clark, myself. So I'm importing these from the front end from the view, so it's assuming that I'm bringing those in for myself as Molly. Of course, if we went in through the back end of the system, we could always identify the records with the owner on a particular column on the spreadsheet and say who the owner would be or who the salesperson would be on those records. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And so now it's just telling me your data has been submitted for import. Check the status by going to Settings, Data Management, Imports. This is hyperlinked. I'm just going to click on it for right now. This actually brings you just to show you the status of your data import. And you can see that my import is listed here under my Imports view. And as I mentioned earlier, there are ways to backtrack. So let's say we had a data import that went terribly wrong or somebody shouldn't have imported data into the system the way that they did. Something happens and we want to undo that import. I can always check this checkbox next to this import and choose to delete all records imported to this entity during this import, all imported records from the zip file, or delete the import source that just removes that import source from the list. So you have options there as well as bulk delete options that you could always perform later if the data import goes wrong. So I'm just going to close this section up here and of course that data then gets imported in for Molly Clark as accounts that she has in the system. And I think uh, Brian it's probably time that we could take some questions um, from the group. Okay. Um, excuse me, we do have a couple that have popped up. Um, so again, if you have questions, uh, just type them into the uh, GoToWebinar control panel, and I will see them there. Uh, first question that came through is, what if we add custom fields to an entity? Can we import values? Can we import those values into CRM? So that's a great question, and um, the answer is yes. Uh, of course, if you add fields to an entity, for example, um, let's just take a look here at my accounts and I'm just going to pull up uh, one of our accounts in the system Blue Yonder Contractors and you can see that we have actually a custom field here called grade so once we added that field to the entity under customization um, we also added it to this form it is available on our templates. So if I go to accounts um, and download the template from here or if I download it from the back end we can find that grade field. There are a lot of fields so bear with me here. There it is. So um, here's the field that we added. If you add a field that has um, selection values that you can use um, in the drop downs, those will also populate into your spreadsheet. Sometimes they take a little bit of time to fill in. So you might create your field, publish those customizations, and try that download template. If you don't see the field there or you don't see the values there, just give it a little bit of time and then try that again. And sometimes it just takes, a, there's a little bit of lag on it, but they, they will show up in your templates. Okay, next question we have is I did a data import and brought in thousands of records incorrectly. I accidentally put the wrong values into some of the columns. Is there any way to fix this? Uh, there are a couple ways. So one way is we just um, what I just went over is that you could go in and go into the import section and delete the data that was imported during that import. If you have like you're saying, a lot of records that went in there and you don't want to have to backtrack the entire thing um, and bring it back in. You have another option, which is um, you can actually export the data into a static worksheet. So as you can see here, I'm under Export to Excel. And of course, I'm looking at this particular view of accounts, but whatever data it was that you imported, you can export a static worksheet of that data. So you can always filter on these views and see what you want to see. Export that static worksheet, massage the data, so change the columns that look wrong or whatever might have
gone awry with your data uh, import and then import it back in or of course you can bulk delete everything and import the data back in um, there are several different ways you can fix it but of course there's a way to go back to the state that you were in before you imported the data hopefully that answers your question okay next question that came through does CR let the CRM allow us to import notes it does so just under the um, import templates so if we go to data management and templates for data import you'll see all the different items that you can import and notes are one of them so you can import notes into the system just download the template populate the template and then bring it back in if, again if there's some data that you need in addition to the data that's on the template you can always add information or of course with your deep dives with your success coach you can talk about additional mappings or changing the data the way that you import data on, on a regular basis especially if you get something like trade show um, exports that you're constantly importing in and don't want to have to change it to fit the dynamics template okay next question is I need to export data from specific account users or account executives I don't see views that explicitly list out who they are owned by and I don't want to export all the data out of the system so exporting data for specific account owners question yeah so um, I would recommend creating an advanced find like we did earlier um, including the columns that you want to see so you can go to your advanced find edit those columns so you want to add in the columns that you want to actually see right now there are three right here but you can add in more columns onto your export by clicking add columns like we looked at before and then creating your criteria by fields and related entities um, and then of course you can save that use it again in the future modify it and then export the data from there but I think advanced find is the way that you'll find it works best for you okay and then the uh, last question is I'm worried that uh, people will walk out the door with our CRM data using the exportability I don't want our users having the ability to export opportunities to Excel any way to do this so at yeah at a high level um, I don't believe we can say that we want to restrict your export um, to not allow users to export opportunities you can just overall shut down their ability to export so just like we went over before um, it's kind of an all-or-nothing rule on that security rule that says they cannot export to Excel so you can shut that off as well as that offline feature that I talked about with Outlook um, turn both of those off and then you can pretty much ensure that unless they screenshot the system or just by memory took it out um, they wouldn't be able to bulk remove your data and walk away with it okay and that looks like that is the last question so oh thank you um, yeah so I'd like to thank everyone for attending today um, I know your time is valuable so I hope you found the information you presented valuable as well if you have any questions that come up after we end the presentation, uh, please feel free to reach out to Eric Anderson or your account manager uh, at 844-244-6310. Number's up on the screen there. Um, they'd love to hear from you. Again, today's presentation was recorded and will be posted to quantuscrm.com slash events uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. If some details, or if you know someone you think might benefit from the presentation, you can uh, find the recorded webinar there along with all the others. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and uh, everyone go out and have a great, fantastic day. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.